Lace them up, let's start the show. We're digging in with Trey. 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 We're digging in with Trey today. Yeah. Whoa, I'll tell you, January. Once again, the Canes set the world on fire. Another one of their ridiculously great streaks, epic comebacks. That makes my, it's aging me in dog years. I talked to the great Frank about it when I consult him about the, the dig in player of the month for the Hurricanes. And it is, a, with all these great candidates, it's aging me in dog years. There's no question about it. Ultimately, had to go with my fellow pure Michigander, Jalen Chatty. I'm going to Chatmandu Chatfield. You know, you look at it, he's played terrifically the whole year. He's been rewarded offensively going to Chatmandu, but in January with the ultra important Jacob Slavin out of the lineup, he played a string of games seamlessly on his offside. That is hard to do. Very few can do it. He's earned the shovel, Jalen has, and this is gonna be epic. We're gonna sit down with him momentarily and we're able to do so thanks to the great people at Casual Elegance Designs. They create and bring to life interior spaces that flat out speak to you. I know firsthand. Oh, I did my master bathroom. I practically live in that fountain shower now thanks to the great huge Kaniac Lori Moscato. Oh, and Casual Elegance, they've got me convinced they're going to do my kitchen. They, gee, Lori's redesigning my whole joint this summer. I entrust her. And she creates it just for you. Casual Elegance Designs, NC.com, every social media platform. Dig in trip.merch. I can tell you at the Fan Fest before, the absolute epic seems to be the word that I, the legendary stadium series. I saw dig in merch all over the fan fest from the huge Kaniacs. Was it ever awesome to see? Check it out at digintrip.com. Without further ado, let's go to Chatmandu. Well, we are in Chatmandu Central here. We have Josie off camera, but Arlo, you'll make an appearance, and the great Frank. Yeah. Jalen, it's my pleasure to award you this shovel. All right, it's an honor. Thank you. You earned it. Let's go. Congratulations. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Well done. Um, gosh, where do we start? So many things to uh, to get to. Uh, listen, we we delayed taping this because of uh, the break and then mm -hmm. uh, the Hall of Fame night, Dad's trip, and then of course the culmination, the outdoor game. What's been the most enjoyable part of it? Um. It's definitely not the break. I mean, the break was fun, and, you know, you enjoy your time off, but, you know, I love playing hockey, and, uh, you know, it felt like forever being off the ice, but, you know, being able to come back and, you know, getting all the dads to come on that trip and, you know, getting that win in Washington and then, you know, following that up with another win against Montreal and then the big outdoor game, which was uh, by far one of the coolest experiences uh, I've ever had in hockey. Um, just how great the fans were, the turnout of the whole event, and you know how well it all just went, and just you know being able to play outdoors again, like as a, when I was a kid, you know, um, it was fun, and you know I had a great time. Okay, before Frank, because Frank wants to go hang with Arlo. Okay, let's set the record straight. In two, you're obviously a dog lover, Josie and Arlo. In 2019, you were on tape saying that the worst dog name there was was Frank. <laughs> Now, this is years before your man, Frank, always looking right yeah, at you. Yeah, yes. Do you want to respond? You know what? That was years ago, and like you said, Frank wasn't in the picture yet. Yeah. But, you know, now that I've, you know, met Frank, seen him, and you have him, um, it definitely fits, and I was completely wrong about that. Um, maybe not all dogs, but, you know, this Frank right here, it's a perfect fit for a name for him. Okay, Frank, are you satisfied with that? You're looking at uh, Arlo to get confirmation. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes. Um, Okay, I want to get into the nuts and bolts. I mean, mm -hmm. you earned the shovel through and through. Uh, your dear friend Jacob Slavin was out for a good percentage of the of the month. Yep. And you played your offside. That is so difficult to do. What allowed you to do it? Because you did it seamlessly. 
Um, honestly, I just try to prepare, you know, each game, like as if I was just playing on my right side. Uh, definitely different, definitely, you know, a little awkward at times, but, you know, at the end of the day, you're just playing hockey and, uh, you know, being able to be paired up with somebody like Burnsy, as good as he is, and, uh, you know, I did get a little bit more minutes, but, you know, I thought I handled that really well, and, uh, you know, I, even in practice, I was getting extra reps in on the left side and, uh, you know, just working on the little things to be prepared for the game. What are the little things that are different? I mean, as an analyst, I talk about, hey, listen, oh, I love the way these two are bonding. You know what? They're bonding yeah. Arlo and Frank like you did with Brent Burns and you have with oh, yeah. so an instant ca and right now with veteran Calvin DeHaan. Mm -hmm. What are the things? You know, you're on, I think about your backhand at the offensive blue line, going back to get pucks. What are the challenges in your offside? Because you've never played it. I mean, just like you said, it's honestly, the whole game kind of changes because you're so used to being on the right side. Even when you're on the blue line and the puck's coming out, you're crossing over a certain way. Um, you're going back for pucks, like you said. Uh, you're looking back, you always got your forehand open. This time I was kind of turned away. So just trying to get more comfortable with that. Um, obviously, like you said, the puck's flying up at you at the blue line. Um, the backhand play could be challenging and can be, but, you know, I thought I did a good job of that oh, too. Just you, just handling the puck, not not trying to do too much and, you know, giving it down low to our forwards because I know they're good at making plays. And, you know, at the same time, when me and Bernsey played together also, um, a lot of talk was on the ice. He was, he's a huge talker, big communicator, and he helped me out a lot. Yeah, it, let's talk about Brent Burns um, because cool for me. It was actually the same road trip where you were doing the bench interview in Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, and... Prior to that, we were in Calgary, and I rode over with uh, Brent Burns in an early Uber, and he was just raving about how much he likes you as a person and his belief in your upside as a player. Mm -hmm. um, can you just maybe bring some layers of, of that relationship? Uh, because it's, it's pretty darn clear. He has enjoyed um, mentoring you, being mm -hmm. your friend, immensely. Yeah, I mean, he's the player who he is and the guy who he is. Um... Before knowing him, I knew him. I knew of him. Um, I knew he was a good guy, a good player. And when he came here, it was a little, it was a little weird at first, you know, just being teammates with him because how much I watched him growing up. But uh, having that opportunity to learn from him and just to see how he goes day to day and how he prepares, you know, to be as great as he is, is something I want to do and I want to get to. So I watched him. I asked questions and. Uh, you know, for him being on the right side, he's he's a great guy to watch, and you know I really enjoyed having him here. I mean, he's a funny guy, as you know, and, and he's he's just awesome all around, and uh, you know I really love it. What's it like between shifts with Brent Burns? Because I, I just envision it's a constant conversation. It's a constant conversation. You might hear him huffing and puffing because yeah. he, he clocks in some big minutes, but you know. Uh, He's just a normal guy, too, at the end of the day. He's funny, and, uh, you know, he gets a little chatty with the refs on the bench a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Slavin, at, 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 at some point, we're going to ask um, your, your wonderful, significant other, uh, Drew, the great Drew, to come in. I, I had the, the privilege of, of joining you and Drew, and, and I want to ask about Jacob Slavin mm -hmm. and his wife, Kylie, at, at, at church. Um, it was a, just an awesome Sunday service. Your faith is, is central to you. It's everything to you. If you're comfortable talking about it, uh, could you? Yeah. Um, so the first time I actually went to church was with him was last year during preseason. Um, I got to talk to him a little bit, and he was like, hey, I'm going to go to church. So, you know, that was the first time I've been back to church in a while. And ever since then, I didn't spend a lot of time here last year, but, you know, I was always trying to get the Bible in and read. And then even this year, I thought it continued and it took another step. And uh, my faith, like you said, it's been everything. It's been what's kept me positive throughout the year, even when things have gone bad. Um, it's kept me level-headed and, uh, you know, like you said, getting together and going to church. is just a great day. We can all bond. We can all get closer to Jesus and, you know, spend a great Sunday together and, you know, just keep enjoying in that. Um, we have a little chapel service too that we do at the rink with Sid um, every couple of weeks, maybe once or twice a month, which is also awesome. Um, we go through a little Bible, a little study, and you know, just keep learning and you know, just keep having that faith because I know I'm here for a reason, and you know, it pushes me every day to to live that life that I should live, and you know, just be a great person and you know, help out when I can. Uh, for those dig in viewers and listeners, Sid is um, he's actually a Federal Express pilot and a chaplain as well, and is, um, he has been guiding um, 
Christian Hurricanes for a long period. He's a, just an awesome human being. Uh, okay. Step step further on that. You know, one of the bench interviews we did, I think during January, because you have this tangible self belief mm -hmm. that allows you, in my view, as as your analyst, I'm your friend too, but to grab the moment, not let the moment grab you. Do do you does your Christian faith does it help you with that? I just had this conversation with Cam Ward before his Hall of Fame night because his mm -hmm. faith is everything to him. Does it help you with regards to your self belief? Because your self belief, Jalen, is extremely evident. Yeah, I mean honestly, I've gave all my credit this year to God. Mm -hmm. um, I thought without him, and I know without him that I wouldn't be where I am today. Just the positivity and the outlook on everything in life and just realizing how blessed I really am and how blessed we all are to, you know, see another day. So that helps me live life in the moment, in the present. Um, don't get caught up in the past. Don't get caught up in the future. Just try to live in this very moment, this very present, us right now talking, for example, and, you know, just taking it all in and enjoying each day. And I think, you know, a lot of times as hockey players and athletes or even people in general, we like to, you know, get caught up on things that happen that we can't control, that we can't change, or maybe worry about something that's going to happen in the future. But if you just have your trust in God, like I've had in Jesus, and, um, you know, just believe whatever happens is the outcome that's supposed to happen, and you take it as a learning curve, or you enjoy the moment, and you just keep moving from there. Who did you think, great stuff, um, it's what it's all about. Who did you think when Drew... You, Jalen, Kylie Slavin, Hannah Yates uh, was there, and myself. Who did you think was the best singer at that Sunday church service I attended? I will say, besides myself, Jacob's a good singer. He doesn't like to admit it. I think Kylie was really good. She came over towards the end. Um, I think, or she might have took Charlie out, their little boy out, and uh, she came back, sat next to me, and she has a pretty good voice. So I was, I've been telling Jacob, me and him need to get on stage one day and uh, sing a song, but he's not into it, so. And no comments about my belting ability. I didn't I mean, hear I was, you. I missed you. I, I you were on from my heart. You were on the other end. I'm yeah. not saying you weren't, but yeah. I can't say I got uh, too close to you to hear you. Okay. All right. Well, we'll have to have round two. Yeah. Um, Chatman do. Okay. So our our interview in uh, Vancouver that I was all pumped about. We walked back after the morning skate. Uh, we're both pure Michiganders. Mm -hmm. Uh, so proud that you're a pure Michigander. Yep. And Bobby Seeger, I was at his last concert at Pine Knob. So going to Kathmandu, going to Chatmandu, I was so excited to say it when you got your first NHL yeah. goal and Pittsburgh off that ozone draw. Well, how do you feel about it? I love it. Um, it took a while to go to Chatmandu, right? But when we got there, we, we were, were rolling. Chances, and we were, man. yeah, I mean, like I said, I was, just staying in the present, I knew I could have scored a few goals before that, obviously. But, uh, you know, like you said, the first one in Pittsburgh, it clicked and went well. And uh, I thought all year it's kind of been like that. And, you know, it just kept riding. And, and it may come in waves that you may not score for a while. But as long as, like you said, I get the opportunity, I get the chances, uh, that's all you can ask for. you got to bury it sometimes. But, you know, we got to get back to Chapman, do It's been a few games now. Well, you've been getting your chances, and I, I just, I mean, there have been, and these chances, I mean, it's on the tip of my tongue. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to pull out a different lyric from yeah, Bob's maybe. song. maybe. And pull out some of his other songs. Yeah. I just love Bob Seeger, as do you. You said at the end of the yep. interview in, in Vancouver, I love Bob. Speaking of that, was on the road. Mm -hmm. um, give us a taste. Who do, you, who do you typically go out to dinner with on the road? What's road been like? Uh, you, know, you know, where do you like to eat? Uh, some of your favorite memories, mm -hmm. you know, being on the road. You were on the road 19 of the first 28 games. Oh, yeah. I mean, for one, we eat great on the road. I mean, whether it's on the plane, after a game, or the dinner's out. Um, we always stay in nice hotels. So usually, uh, I've been going out to uh, dinner with Slavo a lot. You know, me and him, sometimes with the decor. I've been out with Bernsey, Hunter, and sometimes it's a bigger it's group. meat eaters. I mean, they... Bernsey's I always getting the ribeye, a big ribeye, you know. So I, I've been... Knowing me, I'm following him too. He was calling me ribeye for a little bit at the start of the year, but uh, I wouldn't say I'm a, as big as a meat eater as those two, at least. But you know, my favorite is probably Italian. Yeah. We've had some good spots there, even in uh, New York City. Uh, me and Slavo find a, found a nice little hole in the wall, and the place was dynamite. Don't know what it was called, but it was just a small restaurant. But you could tell it was really authentic, and the food was great. What kind of sauce, or did you have? Uh Protein? Did you have pasta? What kind of sauce? I had just like a gnocchi with uh, oh. some chicken, yeah, and a, and a nice salad before, yeah. Yeah. Just the basic, you know. 
you met Drew when Drew was in Windsor. I mean, I went the whole, I digress. Drew, my, my uh, college girlfriend, she was a soccer player, and she said that, um, that a guy that can cook is a sexy guy. And so she came to visit me, and I told her, well, I can cook. And she went for a run, and uh, yeah. I ordered the local Italian trattoria in Gross Point in Michigan and ordered gnocchi. And so then I'm driving back, and she's like a half a mile away or maybe even a quarter of a mile from getting back to the house. And so I'm you know, pulling out the carryout, and I'm putting p- potato flour and all the stuff, the ingredients, I'm throwing it around the floor of the kitchen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she thought we sat down. She thought I was Brad Pitt, and I, you know, I came clean. <laughs> As we welcome in the great Drew. Drew, come on in. Slide in, man. Slide in. Uh, you guys are due. It's going to be a boy. It's going to be a boy. In early July. Chapman Jr. Well, that, that, hang on. I was going to ask, would you ever consider naming him Chapman Jr.? All right. <laughs> it's up in the air. The name still isn't set yet. I mean, I'm all for it. I don't know if she is. She... We'll discuss. We'll discuss. Yeah, yeah we'll that's, talk about that's that. a hard one. <laughs> we'll talk about that one. Um, how are you feeling? Good. Yeah, everything's going really well. First trimester, obviously, was a little rough, but second trimester is going a lot more smooth. <laughs> You know, it's, we were talking about Susan Burns, Brent's wife, yeah. Kylie Slavin. Yeah. Um, you guys are a team. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's something that doesn't get spoken about enough. Maybe could you, could you maybe both speak about your journey together, professionally and personally, because you've had to trudge the road to the mm-hmm. National Hockey League. You've had to earn everything that you've gotten. You've been there with unconditional support and belief. And maybe speak about the team element. Maybe let's start with you, Drew. Oh gosh, there's been a lot. We've been out through a lot of ups and downs in the sense of just him getting to where he is today, really, and being a part of it has been so eye-opening because before him, I didn't know what it took to really get to the point he's at today, and being a part of it has been such an amazing experience, but also seeing how hard he works and how much he puts in on and off the ice and just like his mental game is just it's improved over the years and he just keeps getting better and better at it so it's inspiring it's also great to just see and be a part of Jalen yeah just like she said um she might have missed the whole start of my career but she's definitely been she didn't live with me my first year pro then after that she moved in so I mean my first year I was a mess I wasn't eating I didn't have a car I, I didn't cook at home like you know just a typical guy thing uh I was 21, but I was living life, and I was, I was playing fun hockey in the AHL. But when she came along, uh, just a great support system. Um, sometimes she may not feel appreciated, but she knows how much I love her. And just the cooking, the cleaning, um, the organizing. Um, I sometimes joke and call her my assistant because she <laughs> handles so much for me. But, you know, without her, I tried to focus so much on hockey, and I put so much effort into it. And... Uh, if I didn't do that, I definitely wouldn't be here today. She's seen my, uh, in the summer, my 4.30 a.m. wake up. Oh, yeah. Um, just five days a week, six days a week, just grinding. Um, and, you know, it's all worthwhile. It all pays off. Um, it's something, a journey we would both like to go through. And, you know, it's the adventure, you know, the experience of life. Um, and it's definitely been hard. It hasn't been easy. But, uh, you know, without her, I wouldn't be here. Well, that's digging in, both you guys. Now... What about the games itself, Drew? Uh, let's just talk about, well, the outdoor game. I lost my Pure Michigan status because I froze my ass. Um, do you get nervous watching Jalen play? Or are you okay? You know what? In the A, I was way more nervous just because I find it's a prettier game. Guys are a little bit tougher in the sense of everyone's coming for everyone's job, right? So it was a little more nerve-wracking um, in the A. Now... Yeah, I still get a little nervous, but not as bad. I trust him and his teammates that, you know, he's going to be safe out there. And lots of prayers before. <laughs> lots of prayers before. But, yeah. Ah, this is just cool. And, you know, we're so fortunate that, you know, you came here from Vancouver. Mm-hmm. And I can genuinely say, Chatty had me at Jerry Maguire Hello. Because at the time, your teammate, Brett Pesci and Tony D'Angelo, um, they went on COVID protocol. And so mm-hmm. the first game in Dallas, I'm like, whoa, Jalen Chatfield can play. <laughs> um, but this is such a, I've been here for a long time. 
and this is such these guys keep me young we we have so much fun i'm their yep. analyst but we we have so much fun drew maybe can you guys both speak about because you've been in other places mm -hmm. you know you, you you're from windsor you know the windsor spitfires granted that's the ontario hockey league but the unique special family element here in carolina could drew maybe you could start because i think it was on display this weekend at the stadium series i have said even like when i'm talking to my parents anyone that this organization and the group of girls we have here um, is like no other. Um, it's, it's just there. Everyone is so humble, so level headed, so sweet, wants to help. It's also an older group. Everyone, a lot of, well, majority of the girls have kids. So especially in my situation where I'm now pregnant and I'm going through this whole new life stage they have all been there to support me and especially you know i mentioned we were talking about susan burns and kylie slavin those two have been tremendous to me this season and have just like helped me along the way and we've all bonded really well and we all get along really well um, everyone has such busy schedules but we do try and get together as much as possible so this outdoor game was super special to be all together yeah, yeah cool yeah I mean, I can think back from the first day two years ago at camp when I walked in. Um, didn't know much about the NHL, didn't know what the standard was, didn't know, I mean, obviously now that I've been from uh, two different teams, I know that every team's going to be different, but just walking in that first day and how great all the guys were, I mean, from the trainers to meeting Roddy, Grease, uh, I didn't meet you the first day at the practice rink, uh, but it, it, like, it, it was just, hey, go get him. Or well, something. they're excited to be here. Yeah, yeah, they are. And Frank, I don't know what Frank's doing. <laughs> Frank's taunting Joe. It's a taunting arm. But, I mean, I think it just goes back to the culture, right, of that I want to say Roddy was a part of, a big big part of rebuilding. Um, I can't say I knew too much about Carolina, mm -hmm. but just finding out recently, really re from the outdoor game, of how much the fans have been a part of this and how much we've grown and all came together and – you know how much this is a place that they want to win, and that's what we want to do here. And uh, like she says, the the support from all the, everybody, you know, the doctors, um, yeah. it's it's unbelievable. Um, the team, not one bad guy in the locker room. I love them all. Um, I go out every night, and you know, I put my body on the line for those guys. I put my body on the line for you, the coaches. Um, Cause I know we all are in this together as a family, as one. And you see Roddy pass out the T-shirt to C5, and just seeing how deep it goes, and we're but we got 20 something games left in the year and we're still passing them out just shows how much or how many people we have involved in this and how much it's going to take to do it all what we want to do and you know it, it it just motivates me to never take a day off that is spectacular stuff and here in canineville known as batman do <laughs> i'm going to end on that note Bruzy, thank you for having us yep thank you Daddy, you know how much i love yep. you love you too going. congratulations thank you appreciate it we're digging in with Trip today, yeah. Today, yeah. Today, yeah. Today.